What role does a speech language pathologist have in Anne Arundel County Public Schools? Next on Food for Thought. Hi, I'm Jody Rissi, the host for Food for Thought, and thanks for watching. Today I'm honored to host Christy Nolan from the Anne Arundel County Public Schools Office of Special Services. Welcome, Christy, to Food for Thought. Well, thank you so much, Jody, for having me. I appreciate you inviting me today. Good. Can you tell the viewers a little bit about yourself first, and then we'll go into your role in Anne Arundel County Public Schools? Sure. So I'm a speech language pathologist. I've been working with the team here at Anne Arundel County Public Schools for 10 years, but I've been a speech therapist longer. I've been a speech therapist for 28 years. Um, prior to my start here in Anne Arundel County Public Schools, I worked in healthcare, various healthcare settings, um, working with people with communication difficulties and with swallowing deficits. So working with people to help them learn how to chew and swallow better, uh, my role here in Anne Arundel County Public Schools is to work with the Safe Mealtime and Academics Resource Team. So that is quite a mouthful. And it's called the, <laughs> the SMART Team, The right? SMART Team, and that just <laughs> happens to be the acronym for it. Not because we think that highly of ourselves, but it is the Safe Mealtime and Academics Resource Team. Good. Uh, so I've learned something just recently, and I think you and I go way back. Yes. But you just said 28 years, and it's my 28th year. So I think it's kind of fun, yeah, right? Yeah. I think every time I do a show, I think I know the person so well, and I think I work with them so often, and then something always pops up. And I'm so excited to think we have another little connection that yeah. I know now that I didn't know when I came into the studio. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Fun. That's good. So tell the viewers a little bit. So there's, it's a speech language pathologist. Yes. Um, it sounds very technical. It sounds medical. Um, <laughs> you talked a little bit about the SMART team, and I think we'll probably, you know, kind of talk, it, talk about it being the SMART team. But mm -hmm. what, what is that role? Like, what would a typical day in a school be for, for yourself as the speech language pathologist? Okay. Well, for speech language pathologists in a school-based setting, so speech language pathologists work with they work with the school teams and with the students. They work to identify and then to provide therapy and treatment if needed for students with articulation difficulties, maybe fluency trouble, voice, language issues. Um, so they work to provide therapy in order for that student to better communicate in their school environment. So it's really about the academic setting. So that's what school speech pathologists do. And then there are other school speech pathologists that provide resource support for children with feeding and swallowing needs. And so, so do you do both roles or is it more specific one role looking at the, um, I'm gonna say like the nutritional value or the feeding protocol? Is mm -hmm. that different than what you're gonna do for the language piece of it? Sure, so currently for me right now, my job is just to work on the Safe Mealtime and Academics Resource Team. So we, um, there are two of us on that team. Becky Gondak is my speech pathology partner on the Safe Mealtime team. And we uh, really go out and assist the speech therapists, occupational therapists, and the teachers out at the schools who are helping to daily support children with chewing and swallowing concerns. So we always look to, I think, being in an education setting, right, it's um, all the education for the student, obviously, is the primary. But you also do trainings or education pieces, right, with a student, with a family, maybe even with a staff member in a school, you know. So really, when you think of speech therapist or the speech language pathologist, <laughs> you know, it's a bigger part of the whole school environment, right? So sure. what would some trainings be or education pieces be, you know, in a, in a daily, in, in a day for you? Sure. So um, let's, as we're going to support the children with any sort of chewing and swallowing concerns, and I just want to be specific about that. These are not students that are avoiding foods because they don't like the texture or <clears throat> maybe considered a little picky about what they're eating. I'm talking about children that have some medical conditions that make it very difficult for them to safely chew textures or the ability to safely protect their airway when they swallow. So when they, so when you're working with them on the, I guess, the chewing or the swallowing, and I think it's something that I've learned a lot working with you um, and Becky, right, that um, 
I guess it's almost how it rolls in their mouth, right? Mm -hmm. Or how, I, I guess roll might not be the right terminology, <laughs> but that's the dietitian talking. Sure. Um, so when you're looking at that, so you're, you're almost going to know that there's a medical need for you to then work one-on-one -on -one with the student. As a speech pathologist with the Safe Mealtime team, our job is to go in and work with the school-based speech pathologist, with the occupational therapist, with the teacher as they are supporting that child. So we'll go in and see that child with the team there at school. We'll help them identify who's having trouble with the actual muscle part of the chewing and the swallowing. Um, and once that is identified, um, then we will work with the families and with the school team to create a safe mealtime plan for that child to be implemented during the school setting. Okay, and then we work with, sorry, we work with training the school team with, we're looking at mealtime safety practices just in general, what to look for and how to support that child specifically with their needs. And I think on the mealtime piece, you're not only working with the, the teacher or the staff member with the student, but that's where you work with our staff. Absolutely. Right. That's where we really have a lot of collaboration and overlap because we really need you in the food nutrition as you support us and our students with the diet textures, the food textures that are appropriate for that child's need. We're so thankful and grateful for you all for working with us. No, thank you. I think every year we just get some more, um, the collaboration grows and grows and grows and the partnership is stronger than ever. Um, you know, being a dietitian and I think going through my diet dietetics program, it was always like, all right, I know these things exist. And then how do you get to like a textured modified diet? Or how do I as a dietitian work with a speech um, language pathologist or therapist, right, <laughs> to look at the swallowing. So what do you do as, you know, for our county? So somebody's watching, they're probably saying, well, like, how do we decide the diet? How do we pick the diet that's appropriate in a, you know, modifying the texture for that student's acceptability and mm -hmm. safety? Sure. So this is where we really collaborate a lot with the student's family, right? Because they're the one that knows that child. And a lot of times our students are working with outpatient therapists or with physicians. So we're really talking about the students that are having a safety concern with their chewing and their swallowing. So we work with the family. We hear what their um, concerns are. We work with the school team. And then we go in and we observe the child. And we watch how they chew. And we watch how they chew different textures. And we, we talk with families and see what is the safest texture to provide for them here in the school setting. And there's a certain diet that you all look at, or there's a model. I'm, I guess it's really, it's probably more of a model. Sure. And it's the international dysphagia diet. Sure, sure. So the International Dysphagia Diet Standard Initiative is another mouthful to say, but that is a nice way to standardize when we're talking about diet textures. So that way it makes sure that we're all using the same terminology. So when we're receiving outside reports from therapists or physicians, or when we're talking with you, when we're talking with other speech therapists and occupational therapists, and make sure that we're using the same terminology. And it's a classification system to tell, to let everybody know what food textures go into what category. Yeah. Um, and we use those, so we try to be very specific about the textures, what we're calling each texture, and when we make the school-based safety plans. So. And then, so where we would start to coordinate is you would evaluate one of the students in Anne Arundel County. You would mm -hmm. already be working, like you said, with the family and mm -hmm. with uh, the staff at the school. Mm -hmm. But you would then say to me or to the registered dietitians on our staff, um, this child or this student would require a puree diet. Right. And then we're able to put that right into our uh, food service system. So we know if Jody Rissy was coming through and I was on a puree diet, it would pop up. So we would know right away. That would be the first indicator to say, here comes a student. We know they have a modified um, texture diet. And then we know it aligned with the, um, the template or the <laughs> international dysphagia, dysphagia diet, diet right. in the category that you prescribe for them, basically. Right. So that, that the category that is on their school-wide safety mealtime safety plan, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think that's, um, it, and it's grown so much over the years. So back in the day, and we've uh -huh. both been here a while, um, it was funny, I think we had it in place. Um, I think the communication was always so strong and we really you know, communicated well on who had what, but we really took it to that next step where it's documented. It's the same documentation and the same nomenclature for every diet, mm -hmm. right? So it could be a puree diet, but it's puree basically, for um, that certain specification of what that texture needs to be for the rotini with meat sauce or whatever we're going to blend for that, for that student. Right. 
So, and then we're able to, you um, put them in a spreadsheet for us. We're able to look at all of our students that we have in a spreadsheet. We're able then to make sure the cafeteria manager knows it's going to pop up. They're going to see that on the screen. And then that's where you, the registered dietitian at the, um, at the school, mm -hmm. and our managers at the school, right, our cafe managers get, get to really work together on that texture. Right, and you guys do such a great job with providing the appropriate textures for our students. And again, we're so appreciative for that. And then once the, the student gets the food and they come out and they're back at the cafeteria table, then their teachers are also looking and making sure and providing supports that they will need um, in that setting. And it's funny because I think our managers sometimes are, they're, they're worried, right? They're nervous that the student's not going to be able to swallow, you know, maybe the consistency or they made it a little bit too thick, a little bit too thin. <laughs> um, minced moist is a really, um, it's a tough, it's that's a, a tough one. one. That's mm -hmm. tricky. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the guidelines, it's so spelled out for us, right? Mm -hmm. So it's very nicely spelled out. Um, what it should look like, how we can mix things. You know, you wouldn't mix, I'm trying to think of something that we worked on. Um, uh, if you could use milk as the, the fluid for the consistency, so much milk would go into a muffin, for instance, if sure. we were going to puree the muffin. Sure. So it doesn't alter the taste. Um, it, it keeps it tasting as delicious as every other school meal that we're serving, <laughs> other right. than the textures modified. Right. Well, and the great thing about it is that when the textures are modified and you have a standard system now for your, for the diet menus, um, then that means that all of the children can access the cafeteria meals. And that's really what's been nice. But our, our departments have collaborated together for many years, like you had said, and we've done different things together. One, we, we just would send the spreadsheets and, like you said, in the email and the correspondence back and forth between the dietitians and the speech pathologists. But we've also gotten together to create um, diet consistency chart. I want to make sure I say that name right, too, like all these. <laughs> but the diet consistency chart, which is a great tool that we've been able to use for families and for teachers. So once we have a food texture that the family and the team has agreed upon that is the appropriate texture for the safety for that child while they're in school with us, um, we can give the family a diet consistency chart. And so on that diet consistency chart, which was done in collaboration with your dietitians, um, it has all the items that are on the school menu, and it really classifies what food texture those items belong in. And then it also has a list for families about what foods, if they do pack something from home, would also fit within that category. So that's and been really helpful as a resource to families. I think so, because it's so specific. It's specific to our four-week cycle menu. So yes. I think that's the part that, um, I'll be honest, I always say, you know, AACPS is awesome, and I think we're, you know, of course, the best in the country, but <laughs> I wonder, you know, does every school district do this? Because I just think when I watch the collaboration between the RDs and with, you know, you and Becky, mm -hmm. it's amazing. And when that first time we looked at that diet consistency chart, that was, it was years ago mm -hmm. when we first looked at that. Now, we weren't specific with our menu at that point, but we already had the diet consistency chart. Consistency, that is a tough one. Consistency <laughs> chart that was aligned with all of our food items. That's so right. I think it made such a difference. And it was, it's specific to each uh, level, right, of yes. just uh, chopped. How big is the chop? Is it one right. inch? Is it a half an inch? Is it a quarter inch? Right. Right. Um, I think that was the beginning that kind of led us into what you did with the food menus that were more standardized. Mm -hmm. You know, as we started looking at each item that was on that cafeteria menu, that was really eye-opening for us. Oh, what is this and where does that belong and what category is that in? And I believe that also made it easier for the cafeteria managers as we were, you know, getting food off the tray lines to the students with the food texture modified needs. I think so. And it's funny. So from, uh, you know, somebody watching, they probably say, well, why didn't we do that originally? And I think our number of students that had texture modification diets five years ago was, you know, less than what happened when we were closed for the pandemic. Absolutely. So we had so many more students once they came back to the classroom eating with us that that's when we said, let's take our existing four week menu. It's already posted for all of our families. And how do we, and I remember going back and forth mm -hmm. with you, right? Mm -hmm. we, 
We did it for weeks to be able to say, <laughs> here, I modified it a little bit more. And then you'd say, well, I think that one's not going to. That's not really soft or that's really regular. Uh -huh. This is really here. Yeah, but that was that's what dietitians and speech pathologists do all the time, right? Mm -hmm. Is we collaborate to f figure out what is on the nutritional value for the diet. And then we'd look at what is on the right texture for that diet. So right. I really appreciate that. And I, I think as soon as we got to that level, I think it was like a light bulb for both of us because we were like, OK, now we've got this. And then I think our cafe managers felt the same way. They were like, well, this is so much easier. I'm not going to try. And I'm trying to think of something. But there's some things like we don't puree or we don't um, mince moist. We right. wouldn't to finely chop them. It's right. just not the right consistency even from the beginning. Right. But I think most items, you took the main menu and then you were able to modify mm -hmm. and then substitute things in to make sure it still fit the requirements that you all follow for a nutritionally I'm not going to use the right words, but the nutritionally appropriate menus. Um, and so that has been really great. And then you're right, the cafeteria managers can take that and then they look exactly, I know exactly what to give this child that's on a minced moist texture diet. Mm -hmm. um, and we even use the same equipment, right? So it's the same blender. Mm -hmm. So I know back in the day we had mm -hmm. more of a, I don't know, would you call it, it's, it was a home use, but not really. Um, it was approved from our Department of Health. Sure. So we knew that it would be the same. Um, blender in all schools and I know we right. just recently updated um, the blender to a ah. um, I guess a, a faster more commercial brand mm -hmm. that really affords our managers the opportunity to really make the best puree and you know keep it the best consistency right. things like that right. um, when we were doing that menu I think what I also found was so interesting is you would ask me a question and you would say does it, is it a, dissol a dissolvable yeah. solid? <laughs> and I'd say to myself, hmm. What is that? I'm not really sure if it's a dissolvable solid. And mm -hmm. it was great discussion about that. So we had a great time, um, numerous times. I know you did it with the dietitians originally. We mm -hmm. recently did it in the past year. You know, what do we do as a team mm -hmm. when we go to a school and we test a product, right? So somebody's probably watching saying, what is a dissolvable solid? Like, how does that fit into one of our diets for one of our students? Right, right. I think it's really nice for that. You had mentioned the international dysphagia diet before, and I think I had mentioned that they have a whole, that it's the standardization for categorizing what foods go in what what category. But it's, when you do talk about something like a dissolvable, it's like some things, is that dissolvable, is it not dissolvable? So there are testing methods that are available. Um, and we, when we meet together, and when we met together at the time, we did use those testing methods to test what is exactly dissolvable. But then other times we just needed to put it in our mouth. So, I mean, really when we're describing dissolvable solids to teachers and families, what we're talking about is a food item that you could put in your mouth. You maybe do a little chew, maybe just to bite down a little bit, but you don't even really have to because the food mixes with the saliva in your mouth and it just dissolves into a paste. So it's not really a lot of hard chewing. Um, but there is a little, there are some things that maybe are considered a dissolvable, like maybe a little piece of graham cracker, but then there are other items that if they've got a coating on them, or I think you were talking, you called it an egg wash, which is probably the proper term for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it makes it harder and therefore it's not dissolvable. So that's when we had a lot of fun in the test kitchen, putting a little water on it, using the fork to press down, following those testing methods provided by the international dysphagia diet and then also doing taste testing ourselves. And even in the diet um, pamphlet, I don't know, language sure. uh, manual, <laughs> um, they show the pictures of that, right? Yes. And I think that's the thing that I found most interesting when we were doing it because I, I think when I went to dietetic school and I kind of knew of different textures, I just really, um, I couldn't remember the whole dissolvability. Right. And it was interesting, just a simple graham cracker that has that little bit of coating on it mm -hmm. would not dissolve when we placed it on our, you know, right. on our tongue. And then I had a hard time because I wanted to, I wanted yeah, to try to it. do a chew. <laughs> and I think you and Becky would have to say no. Just let it dissolve. You have to let it dissolve. Mm -hmm. Or I would have, I would use my tongue. Right, to try to mash it and to chew it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think you had to share with the dietitians and myself at that time too that a student may not be able to do that. Right. So it would, it was interesting. I just remember us all standing around and we were, <laughs> <laughs> that was a really fun day. That's uh -huh. <laughs> and we were trying to count, right? You had to see yeah. how long would it take. So we had the timer and you had to count, mm -hmm. right? So, so very, very sophisticated. And I think we have come so far, you know, with right. the diet consistency chart, all of our specific diets. We do the testing every time we have a new product. Mm -hmm. um, we have even gone back, I think, and revisited some things, right? Right, so, because we weren't sure and we might change it. Because sometimes things... 
we think are one way, we test it one way, and then we realize that it might be a little bit different when it's cut or chopped or minced moist. Mm -hmm. um, the minced moist texture is another one that we do a lot of checking, and we're really happy to have those testing methods, guidelines for that too, because we get the fork out, and does it go through the fork, or does it stay on the fork, or, you know, and it's, it's nice to have those guidelines and to be able to test, and it's great that we can try those things. Those are kind of my favorite days mm -hmm. to try the food. Um, I do tell people all the time that speech pathologists have the best job in the world because we get to talk and eat all day long. So, mm -hmm. I mean, what can be better than that? Right, and it was fun. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was interesting, it was fun. We all had a great time. And I think the end result, like we were just, I remember we had our menus already, you know, on the tables. Mm -hmm. And remember we had everything cut in, in four, six or eight little yep. bite-sized servings. So we were trying to keep it true to what a student would actually, you know, be picking up or what they would be being sure. fed. Sure. Um, and some stuff we, I think we even varied our opinions, right? Yeah, we, um, uh-huh. So there was a lot of a subjectivity <laughs> uh -huh, and there was a lot of a little bit like discussion like do we I think we always erred on the side you know always of the student oh, and gosh. I think that's the mm -hmm. the best thing about working with you all is just the students are such a focus for you that mm -hmm. it really aligns so well with the school food service staff right and the school nutrition professionals always say whatever's best for the students is what we want absolutely. and it's the same thing um, absolutely and speaking of that whatever's best for the students so when you were talking before about the uh, the hybrid time and you know, when all of a sudden we started having a lot of students <clears throat> with some needs for food texture modifications, I think it wasn't that we had more students that needed food textures modified, but we just had so many more students that were accessing the cafeteria foods. Mm -hmm. It was so great when we had the free food for all the students. Mm -hmm. um, and so then all of a sudden, <laughs> students that used to be packing food from home that had food textures modified that would come in modified were accessing the food from the cafeteria. Right. So that's, I think, when we started really to streamline those menus. Mm -hmm. and, um, but it was so great because then the students, all the students could have access have to access. your great food. Right. And it's interesting because I think at that time also that had you talking to all those parents, right? So maybe mm -hmm. a parent that only sent, you know, meals from home. Right. We now gave them a great opportunity to try the food like the rest of the, the students or their classmates. Right. And it, it gave you the opportunity to really talk about our meals, you know, more specifically with, with each and every family member and student. Right. And staff was also really impressed and surprised too, because they a lot of staff members said, I didn't know mm -hmm. that that could be modified. I didn't know the cafeteria could puree. I didn't know they could do all that. So it's been, it's been a, it was a great eye opener for everybody and a great way for us to collaborate and move forward. And on a daily basis, you're in a school, right? Are you out there? So if I was one of your students and I had a texture modification, you might see me today at lunch sure. and see if I'm still eating it correctly, I guess. And then yeah. you might transition me to a different um, texture level? So every day my partner on the SMART team, the other speech therapist, Becky Gondek and I are, are in a school every day at lunch. Sometimes we're in several schools a day for lunch, um, if we get there for breakfast or lunch. So we, we get to see many, many students as they're eating. And we're out there supporting the speech therapist that's at that school, the OT at that school, the teachers that are really in with the students daily. So they're, they're the ones that are checking in on them very frequently. Um, and we're out there to support them. But we do get to see many cafeterias and um, check on those food textures. And usually it's the family that lets us know too when the child is ready to advance textures and we look at what they're safely managing at home and then we'll, we'll watch that child and observe that child and work with the family about trying to advance those textures while they're at school. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, I just think the, the collaboration between us and the collaboration with families mm -hmm. and school staff and the whole school environment is so much more than I think I ever imagined. I think we did it, but it's really, it's alive well and um, just making a great impact for the students. We probably only have a few minutes left. Okay. So we always laugh because we both have children too, right? So yeah. I'm sure, and I get asked all the time, so how do you know the meals are good? Or how do you know they taste good? So we both taste them all the time. Obviously, yep. we just talked about that. So mm -hmm. even for the texture modifications, we taste them. So what do you see when you're in a school as the mom, not <laughs> as your smart team role? Right, and you say we taste them. We even taste the puree, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. and it's great, it's great. Um, but yes, being out at schools every day, I do get to see how the students are enjoying food. And it's really fun because there's so many options available to them. Um, recently, I was at a school and I was 
there with a student as they were eating and it was funny because there was something on the tray that he wasn't sure of and he was asking about it and wasn't sure and we just encouraged him go ahead and try it and it was so fun to watch him try it and then he really liked it and then he ate the whole thing so it's just fun to have that um, the opportunity for students to have new foods maybe some they hadn't tried before because mm -hmm. you get served such a variety so that was really fun to watch the eyes open and real excited he smiled and then ate the whole thing um, yeah, it, I think it's good. I think it's, it's nice fun. to see it. And I think having my mom roll and you having your mom yes. roll, right? Yes. I think that's what's key. And it's funny because you say how they might not try it. So we recently added um, pot stickers. Yes, I remember that day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was in the cafeteria that day. <laughs> so that was really, that was new, right? And everybody's like, yeah. well, what do you call it? Is it a dumpling? Is it a pot sticker? And how do I eat it? <laughs> uh huh. And I had schools that literally said, the students said no, when we called oh. it the pot sticker. Right. But then somebody said, what if we called it a dumpling? And they tried it. So I don't and know. They ate it. You probably saw all sorts of interesting um, dialogue and samples of it. I, I saw I, the day that it came out, I was there at one of the schools, and the children I was with really liked it. They good. thought it was really good. And yeah, you mentioned um, our children, and it's funny because during that hybrid year, my son is in high school, and he was coming home, and every day there were so many new menu items that came up, and so it'd be fun. He'd come home from school and say, oh, they had this on the menu today. And I'd say, oh, what food texture category is that? You know, <laughs> make him kind of talk about, but he, he indulged me in that, and we'd talk about the food texture category, but that's Yeah, and really I think fun. we even had the same discussion, right? You would say, well, my son thinks, you know, and I think we were talking about one of our breakfast items, I remember, yeah, one yeah. time, that he really felt that this was, um, I don't even know. A regular texture, and we yeah. thought it was soft texture or something. Uh -huh. I don't remember the, all the details, but yeah, but it's really fun. The, the children really do enjoy the meals. So, And I think it's, it's important, um, I always say, having a child in the system and knowing, you know, my children went through the system, they have the school meals, they eat school meals, and their friends do. Yeah. So I really get to hear firsthand. So sometimes right. good and bad, or they'll say, <laughs> well, Mrs. Rissy, why don't you add this to the menu? You know, right. so I think it's a lot of fun, but I think it really connects us to the students that we serve. Absolutely. Um, and I think in your case, exactly right. You get to hear from your son mm -hmm. firsthand. And then you are probably also get questions from parents with students that have the texture modification. So you can speak from not only a professional speech language pathologist, but you can speak <laughs> as a mom. True, that's yeah. a really good point. Our families are always really surprised and happy to hear how much modifications can be provided through the school cafeteria. Great. Well, no, thank you for the collaboration. I think the partnership is just, it's priceless. And I think we just strengthen our relationship each year. And I'm really excited. Mm -hmm. I know we're going to, the next step is we're going to look at some videos and we're going to try to really do puree videos and, um, and minced moist, moist yes. and all those great items mm -hmm. to see if we can, you know, have a real visual for all of our cafeteria staff. Yeah, I'm excited about that too. Me too. Yeah. Well, thank you again. Hopefully we'll have you back again on another Food for Thought. Oh, thank you so much for having me and talking this through today. We thank appreciate you. your collaboration. Thank you. As you can see, speech language pathologists and Anne Arundel County Public Schools are true partners with Food and Nutrition Services. We collaborate daily. We look at students all the time to make sure the food is tastes great, is nutritionally sound, and it's the right consistency. If you have any questions about the school meals program, please call me at 410-222-5900. I'll see you again next time on Food for Thought.